Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. This is part two of a series on synthetic datasets created with Blender. In this video, I'm going to talk about probably the most important part of creating a synthetic dataset, and that is creating super realistic 3D rendered images. And of course, I'm going to be talking about this in the context of Blender. Now, Blender, of course, is not the only tool for creating awesome 3D rendered datasets, so I wanted to make that clear. But I am, in this video, going to focus on it and talk about how you can create super high uh, fidelity images that can be used for training neural networks. 3D modeling is probably what Blender is best known for. You can create highly realistic 3D meshes from scratch by creating and manipulating vertices. If you haven't checked in on Blender in a few years, you might not know that in version 2.8, it got a huge UI refresh that made it far easier to use prettier to look at, and generally more inviting to beginners. Blender also supports importing 3D models from other sources. If you have a 3D model that you purchased from an art marketplace or you got from an engineering team, chances are very good that you will have no trouble importing to Blender. On top of that, you can import 3D scans and clean them up with Blender. With the rapid pace of improvement in 3D scanning technology, we're definitely going to see 3D object scans become part of the synthetic dataset creation process. A few years ago, Blender introduced the principled BSDF shader, supporting PBR, that's physically based rendering, materials that look incredibly true to life. This makes it possible to create highly realistic looking materials like glass, plastic, metal, wax, and even organic materials like skin. It's generally not too difficult to find and make a few 3D models to render for a synthetic dataset, but what about the background? It's probably not practical to create rich and diverse 3D worlds or render individual blades of grass. The good news is Blender supports importing images and you can automatically swap out different photos as backgrounds. You can use 2D or 360 degree photos, or even videos as backgrounds. Speaking of 360 degree photos, did you know that you can use high dynamic range 360 degree images to create incredibly realistic lighting in 3D scenes? Blender supports that in addition to its highly realistic ray traced lighting. With Blender, you can fully control lighting intensity, color, and source positions to simulate real-world illumination of your scenes. Rendering is the step where a 3D scene with models, materials, and lighting gets converted to a still image or individual frame in a video. Blender includes two rendering engines, EV and Cycles. EV is a real-time renderer, meaning that it's built to render frames extremely quickly, similar to a game engine like Unity or Unreal Engine. While it's great for previewing your work in Blender while you're working on it, it's not great for photorealism. For photorealistic images, we have Cycles. And to quote Blender's documentation, Cycles is Blender's physically based path tracer for production rendering. It is designed to provide physically based results out of the box with artistic control and flexible shading nodes for production needs. With Cycles, it's possible to render images that are indistinguishable from real photos. If you need convincing, just head over to artstation.com and search Blender to see what's possible. Uh, there are some really amazing works of art on there. On top of that, many third-party rendering engines like V-Ray, Arnold, and Octane support Blender, so if Cycles doesn't quite meet your needs, you can use those instead. The visual effects industry often has a need to compose several videos together at the same time. For example, if an actor is in a scene with a tiger, it's definitely safer to film them separately or even render a 3D version of the tiger and combine those videos in an intelligent way. Blender includes some excellent features for compositing and tracking. You can stick multiple layers together, modify the colors, and even track the movement of a scene so that when the camera moves, the composed layer still appears to match the background. This could be really useful for inserting 3D rendered objects into real world locations for a highly realistic synthetic training image or video. All right, that wraps up this video. I hope I've done a decent job convincing you that Blender is an awesome tool not only for creating photorealistic images, but also for creating synthetic datasets. 
In next week's video, I'm gonna go into a little more detail on the automation component, meaning how you can automate all of this variation that needs to go into a, da a synthetic data set. The annotation part, that means creating annotations automatically so that we can use those to train neural networks. The scalability component, which means we don't want to just run this for a small, tiny data set. We want to generate gigantic, massive data sets and, and you know, not necessarily do that all on one computer or in a physical location. We'd like to do that in the cloud. And finally, just the accessibility of it, how accessible it is to someone who doesn't necessarily have a large budget or doesn't have a ton of different artists or developers, how you can get started just as one person doing this. So stay tuned for that next video and thank you for watching.